Okay, it's October 19th, and the forest has never looked worse below my house. All these evergreen trees, evergreen oaks and bay trees are nearly defoliated because of the drought. And uh, we're gonna walk around down and see things and see how they look. But these plants have gotten virtually no water in almost two years. Uh, let's take a look at this tree over here. That's really, really disturbing. Um, I've been a lot been alive for 52 years. Never seen trees in this kind of condition before. This is a uh, coastal live oak, Quercus agrifolia. It's supposed to be evergreen. Look at this tree. This is a pretty healthy tree, I believe. It's almost devoid of foliage in this section of the tree. There's a little bit of foliage up top, but nothing the way it should look. And off in the distance, that grove of bay trees over there, I've never been able to see the, the floor of the canyon before until now. And so I'm noticing over here, look, here's a bay tree, totally dead. That's definitely because of drought. They say that uh, the last 20 years in California, cumulatively, are the driest 20 years not only when, since, you know, <laughs> we've been around, but, but for, for all tree rings that they have record for. Because um, you think about it, I thought about it when I heard that assertion, and I thought, geez, I can see that. Because in the last 10, 15, the last 20 years, we've had some major droughts. But look at the, you know, there's foliage that's supposed to be on the tree. This is all supposed to be fully loaded full of foliage right now. And it's not. Look over here. Look at this. Look at these bay trees. I mean, <laughs> it's just so sad. So I'm hoping it's totally discolored. There's no leaves, very few leaves. I'm hoping we're at the tail end of this period and that uh, this is about all to end here in about a month with uh, the, rain, the oncoming rains. And uh, what do you think, Rhea? I think we're losing the forest. It's we, going away forever. It's definitely, yeah, this is Rhea's forest. There's a bay tree there. It's just completely dead. Right there, there are many like it, actually. I, the bay trees really got hit hard. I mean, not only have I not seen these things die of anything, and they're more like a pest that come up everywhere, I've never even seen them with this discolored, light, uh, sparse foliage before. So this is a... And, and if you think about these trees, like one year doesn't really matter for these trees. One year of drought, no big deal. A couple years, no big deal. It's the cumulative effect for woody plants that because uh, they can store a lot of moisture but eventually that moisture run, runs out and uh yeah and then uh <laughs> then they got nothing left so right now we're looking at plants that are just barely hanging in there they've got nothing left look at this look at this nothing left except that little sprig right there a couple few leaves that are green and um, I mean I have to say it's apocalyptic po apocalyptic is that how you describe it yeah. this, look at this beautiful oak here this beautiful oak he's been here for gosh probably 150 years that one and uh, it's supposed to be evergreen you're not supposed to see the sky but you see the sky see right through it Leaves all over the ground, just heavily, heavily leaf drops. But anyway, we're going to wander through the forest. We, we have a fear. There's the, the biggest madrone in all of Contra Costa County resides back here, down in this canyon on our property. No one knows about it. There's only a few people who know about it. You and me. <laughs> Maybe a few other people. Uh, and we're fearing that we're looking down at a brown spot in the forest. We're fearing that madrone is completely dead 
from the drought, um, which would be remarkable. It grows right out of the creek. The madrone requires quite a bit more moisture than the rest of these trees. I used to have this place totally deer fenced, but the deer have had their way with me. And so now it's just, uh, should we go across the bridge? Yeah. Let's go across the bridge. That's why. So anyway, the deer fence is, probably have to remove it now for good. Reuse the poles for something else, make something cool. But uh, yeah, this is, what used to be beautiful about this canyon is that it's always evergreen. It's just green all year. Uh, during the dry, the seven month dry season. Except this year, it's just so, so dry and so, so sad. So anyway, we will report on things as we see them before us. Looks like we've had some loss of trees down here. Here's my crazy trail system. <laughs> I need to, <laughs> the trees are falling over everywhere. Well, let's keep rolling. Hey, Rhea. Is that where uh, Ted Kaczynski lives? I'm not sure who that is. You don't know who Ted Kaczynski is? Wasn't he our neighbor? He's the Unabomber. Um, there's some beautiful big leaf maple, yellow foliage in here, lighting up the forest. We don't have too many big leaf maples, we have a few. They tend to grow along the creeks. Need a little more moisture than the rest of these plants. And uh, that one down there is thriving. This is actually our, still our backyard. I was gonna build a teepee over here for my kids. I never did. This is actually my mountain bike trail. I used to ride my mountain bike through here. I haven't done that in a while. Look at that. Is it gorgeous? Acer macrophylla, big leaf maple, right there. Whoa, Rhea, hold on. Here's my other mountain bike trail, I went this way. This is where we're gonna build the teepee right here. We never did. What happened? You should've built your teepee. Another fallen tree? No. You can make a jump out of it. Oh, black oak. There's a the black oak. That's the one you see from the house. Which one? This one. Right? Oh, this big one. Yeah. Okay. It's the black oak, people. I don't know if you can see the color. It's bright yellow. It's one of the most beautiful colored oaks we have in fall. Very few of these oaks actually color up. This one does, the native oaks. And here it is. Let's go take a closer look. It's my favorite oak. Very few of them around. It's like we have two. No, it's just one tree. It's weird. Oh, that... it's a baby. oh, you're right. Yeah, look. So here's the here's the coloration. The black oak with the beautiful coloration of the big leaf maple behind it. And as Rhea pointed out, here's another black oak. I like the black oak because it has really big, beautiful leaves and they color up. I really should come down here with better lighting. These are spectacular trees. So, let's see what else we find. Here's something pretty amazing. This is a native clump grass of some sort, native California grass. There's a whole colony down here. Really should have left with, earlier with better lighting. Whoa! But it's amazing. This grass is actually still alive after all of this horrific drought. This goes to show you that it's been, this species has seen it all before. So, anyway, we've discovered that our favorite madrone is still, still alive. It's down there. No, it's right down there. We're gonna go see it. It's huge, see the red bark? Right there. This tree I were out in the open, people could see it, it would be famous, but it's hidden away down here where no one knows it's here. 
which makes it kind of cool. It's our secret. What do you see? Really? Totally dead. Huh. Let's go and see for our own eyes down here. Super gnarly. The reason we were able to get such a big lot is because the lot goes straight down and then straight back up. There's like no flat land at all. And you need flat land to develop. So there is no way to develop this. So therefore, it had no value. Uh, except to me <laughs> as a forest to preserve and a place to raise my young who I figured would appreciate living in such a gorgeous reserve. Did you like growing up here? Yeah. Like the forest? Yeah. Good. Um, there's another madrone up there. Mm -hmm. Another big one with the headwaters. So, oh goodness. Oh boy. So look how fat this tree is. It's a big boy. The drones are really rare in this part of town. Oh look, Ray, I forgot all about your climbing rope. Go to your climbing rope. Yeah, okay. Here, I'll do it. Film me. <laughs> this, is my, this is how I teach my, taught my children how to deal with the world i'll do a demonstration of that forgot all about that but anyway um yeah so the drone arbutus mendesii beautiful bark on it when it gets older it has this kind of a texture here but further up it has that smooth manzanita like bark but you can't tell but what's disturbing is this whole section here is totally dead big limbs up there are dead this tree's on its way out right that limb's dead there's still yeah. some leaves up there. Do you think this is the one that we're seeing when we see the brown patch? No. It's a different tree. Yeah. And so one of my friends who's equally into plants like me, 20 years ago when I first moved here, he said that I should shore up this whole entire creek bank, build a retaining wall. <laughs> That's like 50 grand. So that I could um, preserve this... Uh, Free because undoubtedly it's going to, this whole bank is going to collapse and then this tree is going to fall into the ravine. But a loss 20 years later, it's not looking good, but it's still kicking. The reason you don't see the madrone out this far is because it, it, it requires more moisture than these oaks and bay trees. And so it's really on the edge of its survivability zone in that regard. And of course, we all know what the topic of the video is, drought walk and arguably driest period, driest cumulative period, driest cumulative 20 year period in a thousand years or something. So this, this poor tree sprouted on the very edge of where it really should be growing as far as water availability goes. And then it's subjected to the driest period in a uh, thousand years. The 20 year period is really the period that a tree needs to like show stress. 20 year decline, doesn't happen overnight. So that's what we're seeing here. 20 years of drought stress decline. Um, anyway, Rhea, come over here. Let's get a video of this, this rope. Come on. This is the perfect hill. You know, if you're gonna do this for your kids, when I say cliff, I don't mean cliff. I mean extremely steep slope bordering definition of cliff. You do, if you do it over a cliff, you might have some serious ramifications. If you do it over a steep slope like this, you know, they might get hurt. They probably won't die. So, I want to revise my recommendation. All right. That was cool. Simple things like that. All right. Let's go find some more cool stuff to look at. Ah! Ah! He was last seen falling into the abyss. <laughs> How do I get out of here? You have to just crawl. Oh. All right, 
fun work. Well, I guess the good news is, although all the leaves are brown, the sky is gray. So that does give me some hope. So I will leave you pondering that proposition, that hope that this year is gonna be the wet year, according to Gary, with a beautiful view of Mount Diablo and a little bit of sound pollution from up above. All right, so I know the exposure is really bad and fuzzy, but who could resist a beautiful moonrise over Mount Diablo? I know I can't. So that's the last image you're gonna see in this video and the gorgeous view that is laid out before me. Please pray for rain.